Hello everybody, this is Michael Smiley coming at you with another video. And today I'm going to be talking about the Star Wars franchise. Um, ex excluding the Clone Wars and Rebels and all that good stuff. Um, but like the main movie franchise. And um, I just want to start by saying how absolutely brilliant this franchise is. Um, I know that it's Star Wars and a lot of people don't think too deep about it, but I mean, it does have a lot of mythology in it. It does have, um, very much inspired by our own historical, um, periods and everything. And, um, it does not get the credit that it absolutely deserves. Um, I mean, it is a huge franchise, obviously, um, but people just really don't think about um, how rich the story actually is. Um, George Lucas uh, is an absolutely he's just a brilliant person, um, especially when it comes to storytelling. Um, he did Star Wars, Willow, Indiana Jones, um, Red Tails, I think the one movie was that came out in like, I don't know, 2008 or something like that. I'm not too sure. I didn't watch that one though, but, um, but his Star Wars movies, oh, Amer American Graffiti. <clears throat> but, um, like, everyone obviously loves, like, he, okay, so, let's talk about this for a minute. George Lucas is not the best on dialogue, um, but he is about the overall picture, the bigger picture, not, you know, who said what really, when he is, he's very brilliant when it comes to um, intertwining mythology into, histor into historical aspects and creating a new story out of that, and he's excellent on the bigger picture. I'm not going to take anything away from, and, and I, the his brilliance and his art artistry and his creativity is completely, um, completely uh, mind-boggling when you think about it because he is so detailed when it comes to the the bigger picture, and he has done created is such a, um, a whole nother universe, uh, enriched with such amazing characters, um, that people can either relate to or be inspired by, um, and, um, yeah, so, and, and the uh, prequel trilo trilogy, blah, if I could talk tonight, if the prequel trilogy, like, it's completely, um, it is completely <sighs> unappreciated for the, the, um, richness that it brings to the story the the depth that it really goes to um yes the original trilogy was great and george lucas changed literally changed the face of cinema with his i um ilm industrial light and magic um special effects company and he really did change the entire scope of what a blockbuster is literally uh and so he really did change, like, if it weren't for Star Wars, 
or George Lucas, the movie genre as a whole would be decades behind. Um, I mean, I'm sure that we would have eventually gotten there at some point, but we would be so far behind. <laughs> Today's movies would probably look like really bad cheesy 80 movie, 80s movies, which the majority of the 80s movies were really great, but they had their cheesiness to them. <clears throat> so, getting back onto the prequels, because I really do want to touch on the prequels, because really people are so judgy on the prequels. First of all, they are judgy because it has to do with politics mainly and that stuff, and it's, oh, it's everybody. But without the prequels and the backstory, Star Wars would literally not exist. Like, there, there's just too much of a backstory for it not to have been made. Um, yes, it was an amazing original trilogy, but when you look at it, and people have had many, many years to look at it, uh, it really does feel like a middle piece instead of the beginning of a saga. Um, I mean, the fourth one had some villain chasing a ship and kidnapping a princess slash senator and like they go to this planet destroying space station like no one knows what's really going on um but or who anybody is but um the story builds up to what the originals were um the technology yes george lucas advanced technology severely um back when he released the original Star Wars movies uh, trio. Um, but he, it still wasn't up to what it should have been to create the, the, the prequels with. <clears throat> Which, they're not really prequels. They are literally the first three movies. They just... George Lucas didn't have the technology to make them at the time, so he made four, five, and six first. <clears throat> and then, obviously, now we have the sequel trilogy because um, he sold his entire empire to Disney, but that's a story for a different day. Um, so I think that the, the prequels are definitely underappreciated. Um, Yes, Jar Jar Binks is an absolute ridiculous character, but he is the comic relief. Um, he, he is n not... He's not as terrible as people make him out to be. Yes, the worst thing that he could have done that they did do was have him literally be the cause of granting, having a vote and granting Chancellor Palpatine emergency power, which basically was his first step in becoming an absolute dictator, but, um, but other than that, Jar Jar Binks was, he was a hilarious obnoxious, not an annoying obnoxious, like, he was a comic relief, he did like, they did have a whole beautiful underwater city where, you know, it, just the environment and just, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it, Jar Jar wasn't as terrible as everyone makes them out to be, and the prequels are definitely not as terrible as everyone makes them out to be. The worst thing that comes to mind when it comes to the prequels, the first three, is the dialogue. Because George Lucas really isn't that great on dialogue, but he is all about the bigger picture. He is 
all about being involved in every single aspect. He is the writer, he is the director, he is the executive producer, he is the one that oversees uh, John Williams' music score. He is the one that is involved in all the special effects and pushing the envelope when it comes to special effects. And he is the one that hired, you know, I mean, Trisha Bigger, the uh, fashion designer for the prequel trilogy, um, she did absolutely fantastic job. They need to hire her for all of the everything. They need to hire her for, especially um, like when it comes to period pieces, they should definitely hire her for every project. Um, So, really, the worst thing that, for me, about the prequel trilogies, or, um, trilogies, about the prequel trilogy is the dialogue. Other than that, it was excellent. It had beautiful worlds, it explored the galaxy, it, ex it got so deep into the story of Star Wars and where Darth Vader did come from, and where he ended up, and why he did it, and, um what happened to Luke and Leia's mom and where she started and you know it, it's a generational franchise it was about the parents then it was about the kids and now it's about the grandchildren um, or grandchild because of Ben Solo um, but and it's really crazy because Everyone sees Darth Vader as the the most iconic, biggest villain of all time. And yes, he did absolute horrible things, and he was ruthless, but at the end of the day, he did have a heart. And, um, I mean, he did slaughter younglings when he was younger, but... Um, there is not one villain in any movie or any show, period, that is as evil and malevolent and um, ruthless um, and really intelligent as um, Emperor Palpatine slash Darth Sidious. Um, his rise to power was an absolute copy and paste of Hitler from our own world history. And it's absolutely crazy, and it happened, and it happened in the movie. And, um, just... It was really crazy to watch, and Ian McDormand is literally one of the best actors ever, period. End of story. He owns the role of Emperor Palpatine. He... There's just no one else that could play for him. No one. Ian McDormand is Emperor Palpatine slash Darth Sidious. Um... So, um, you know, his performance obviously stood out in the prequel trilogy. <clears throat> so, that that's pretty much what the prequel trilogy was about, and, um, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, was actually the first Star Wars movie that I ever seen in theaters. And it looked amazing on the big screen. Um, and I do believe that it, the prequel trilogy got drastically better as it went along. I think that Attack of the Clones is way better than um, The Phantom Menace, I think. Besides the epic... Um, Duel of Fates, but they went all out with that one. Um, 
but Revenge of the Sith is far beyond. Like, the Revenge of the Sith took a massive dump on the first two movies because the Revenge of the Sith is was absolutely brilliantly made. Um, the story came to a head. It really connected both of the trilogies. Um, and... Ian McDormand got to take center stage, and his performance and talent is so brilliant. And um, he could not be more under um, appreciated than he is, because like. When you think of Academy Awards and people owning their roles, Ian McDormand is one of those people. End of story. He should have won countless awards for being a psycho. <laughs> um, but, um, like, the style and the direction and the pacing and everything was just so great in Revenge of the Sith. And the battle at the end where they're going back and forth between Obi-Wan and Anakin and then Yoda and um, Darth Sidious was absolute like it was absolutely mind-boggling when it was happening when I was watching it for the first time in theaters <clears throat> oh and let's go back to Attack of the Clones for a second so the first Star Wars movie that I got to see in theaters was Attack of the Clones and um, I watched it with my whole family, and, uh, like, my family is not a Star Wars fan like I am, but my mom does usually go watch them with me, and actually she has, for all the ones I went to theaters to see, besides Solo, Star Wars Story, but we're going to change that, um, about her watching it soon, but anyway, um, when Yoda pulled out his lightsaber, with Count Dooku, that was real. That was really, really, first of all, it was shocking because you have in your mind that he's already great. You have in your mind, like, you have already pictured it in your head a million times that he is the best of the best and you know, there's no reason for them to even utilize him because who could really challenge him kind of thing. And it's just one of those things where it's like they're not going to do it because if they do it, then they're going to have to go all out because they can't just, like, tiptoe. Like, they can't do a little bit. They, they have to go all out with... Yoda. Yoda is a legendary character. Everyone knows him. Everyone knows how powerful he is and or how hyped up he is. Um, so no one actually believed for a second that they would actually utilize him in a fighting kind of way. And when he pulled out his lightsaber to fight Count Dooku, I was like, first of all, him pulling out his lightsaber wasn't even a thing that came to my mind when he, even, I didn't even believe it, that it was going to happen when he was deflecting the lightning from Count Dooku. <clears throat> I thought in my head, you know, he's obviously going to get away and, you know, they're just going to skip over this whole Yoda thing, fighting him or whatever. And then Yoda pulled out his lightsaber, and it was like, it was like on your edge of the, you know, you're on the edge of your seat because you just, it's just something that you just never thought would happen, but did happen. And it was an amazing experience to get to see, have that experience as my first experience in theaters. Um, also, 
the beginning of the Clone Wars with the huge battle thing that happened. Oops, sorry. With the huge battle thing that happened and everything. It was absolutely insane. Um, <clears throat> so there is a lot to like about Episode 2. Them, like in theaters with them flying through the city chasing after the bounty hunter slash assassin woman. Like, the, in, just crazy. And, um, the Camino aliens were very beautiful, especially their eyes with the galaxies in them. Well, you know. Um. But it was just so detailed. George Lucas made everything so detailed, and let's not forget how beautiful the countryside, um, the countryside, um, what's the word I want to think about? The countryside, um, getaway type thing, where, um, Padme and Anakin could lay low and be out of harm's way kind of thing, but it was, it was so detailed and so beautiful with the lake and the, the beautiful castle looking house, whatever beautiful thing that was. Um, <clears throat> and also her outfits that she wore were more organic and everything, and flowed more, and, um, yeah, so, like, Trisha Bigger did amazing for, uh, Padme's costumes in the first one, well, everyone's obviously, but Padme's because she was queen, she was royalty, so... And I like how Trisha Bigger, like, mixed in different cultures in the world, but still made it her own to where you could obviously, you know, it was a cool nod to those cultures, but she obviously put more emphasis on things. So it was more elaborate. Um... So there was no denial or no um, doubt that Padme was a boss, that she was the boss and she was the queen. Um, my favorite Jedi in the series is actually Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, I know that he only lasted in one movie, but um, he's very calm and collected and really had a thinking process to him. He's very intelligent. Um, he was rebellious when he needed to be, but he was also um, like he he knew. I think that um, the entire Star Wars universe would have turned out dramatically different. I still think that Emperor Palpatine would have found a way um, because he was that powerful. He is that powerful. But I think that the whole dynamic and the entire um, the entire story would have drastically changed if Qui Gon would have lived. Because I think that Qui Gon being there for Anakin and being the father figure that he should have had instead of the mentor you thing that Obi-Wan was because Obi-Wan really didn't want to take Anakin under his wing and he was very clear on not even really liking him um, but Qui-Gon on the other hand wanted to be that father figure and wanted to be there for him and he went against the Jedi Council to think that he was going to train Anakin. And I think that the entire scope of the entire Star Wars universe would be completely different if Qui-Gon would have lived and Paul Palpatine would have would have a lot more uh, more powerful uh, opponents in opposition of his rule than he ultimately does because 
he would have Anakin against him, and well, Padme, and well, she died during childbirth, so. But I think that maybe Palpatine had a hand in that. I don't know. Um, but because she just like she lost the will to live. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I, I really do. Um, I really do think that, like I said, the prequel trilogy was was um, not appreciated as much as it should have been. Um, and let's not forget John Williams' incredible score. Uh, too bad we can't make that man immortal. <laughs> um, He, he's an incredible composer. Um, there is no other music like John Williams's music, and there will never be a composer that will live up to John Williams. And that is the truth. That is facts. Uh, John Williams is the world's greatest music composer. Um, there is not one composer that captures the very feel, the very nature, and grabs you the way that John Williams' music does. And it doesn't stick out. Uh, like, other people's doesn't stick out like his does. Like, He's the one behind Jaws' iconic doo-doo, doo-doo. Um, he is the one that did the Jurassic Park franchise's music. He is, did Star Wars, um, the Indiana Jones series. Absolutely incredible. <clears throat> there will never be another one like him, period, end of story. He is a legend. Um... I am incredibly happy and grateful that he is still alive um, and still making incredible music. So, I did love, obviously, the original trilogy, and <clears throat> I don't think that we have much to say on that because it was rich with history and story and um so rogue one really did add a lot to oh okay so before we get to the original trilogy we're gonna talk about rogue one for a second even though it's a you know a side story but it really isn't a side story like it's a side story but it pushes being one of the main so, <clears throat> um, like, it, this is the side st story of it all, is, um, you know, the characters and stuff like that, but Mon Mothma, Bail Organa, um, it really does bring the incredible special effects they did for the um uh, Tarkin Governor Tarkin was absolutely insane how realistic and how incredible that looked um was super happy and excited that the Death Star was not operational but it was it was enough to make a statement um but it was a tragic story but it was done really well. And one of my favorite sequences, <clears throat> and I really love how they built momentum throughout the movie. Like they started out slow, and then they got bigger, and then faster, and then it like it all came to a head um, for the third act. 
<coughs> sorry guys. And, um, first of all, the most crazy scene, okay, sorry, I, there's so many things to talk about when it comes to Star Wars that I'm, like, all over the place, um, when director Krennic showed up to, um, Mustafar and Darth Vader had a castle there and that was really chilling and everything um, and a little disturbing because that's talk about trauma and everything but um, I love that whole scene of the whole segment there but um, I really really love Oh, sorry guys, it's late, and I'm tired, it's like 12.34 at night, or in the morning, whatever. Um, but, like, the craziest scene, so you know that the Rebels get the Death Star plans, because obviously everyone and their mother has seen A New Hope. But the intensity that was brought to it made it more important and made it, it made a new hope more valid. And Rogue One really solidifies a new hope status of where it is, and it makes everything more impactful. Um, than it originally was because the battle and fighting that they had to go through to get those Death Star plans and you know that the Rebels got the Death Star plans but that moment when Darth Vader all you could hear is his like breathing and then he lights up his lightsaber and then he starts murdering those people like the Rebels and everything on the ship you think, because it is so violent and so crazy, you think that for one second, it, like, th it was so intense what was going on that I literally forgot that the Rebels even were, like, got the plans to where they needed to be. Because for a second, you think that that's not going to be the situation. That's not going to. That's not what's happening because Darth Vader isn't like you're like throw it to the next person because like it was crazy. Like Darth Vader was absolutely insane, and um, they made him really scary, uh, and it was intense. It was the best scene of the entire movie uh, because it was so intense. And literally had you on the edge of your seat and like in complete awe of the entire thing. Um, and it really did flow right in to the moments of A New Hope. So, like, you know, the, the, um, director and editors and everybody involved made it flow right in. It was so smooth. And when you watch them in order, you're, you'll you get how much more impactful A New Hope means. So now we're on the original trilogy. <clears throat> And the original trilogy is absolutely great, obviously. Um, and I know that this is going to be a very unpopular opinion. And I know that everyone's going to completely disagree with me. But so before everyone really jumps on me about this opinion, I will start with the good and then go with the ugly because everyone's going to kill me with the ugly. Okay, well... I'll start with the ugly first, and then people will kill me, and then I can talk about the good. So, Return of the Jedi was actually my favorite of the entire trilogy. 
just like Revenge of the Sith was my favorite of the pre prequel trilogy. And I actually liked it by far more than the other two. That being said, before everyone gets psycho, um, obviously A New Hope was amazing. It, it is the one that set the stage for the entire Star Wars franchise. Um, I believe the reason why people believe that or in most cases, The Empire Strikes Back is the best of the series, or the best of the original trilogy anyway. But I feel like that's the case because it was so dramatically better than the first one. And I don't feel that Return of the Jedi is dramatically better than The Empire Strikes Back, so I don't think that the... I think that that's maybe why, I don't know, but that's just my own personal opinion. I love Return of the Jedi the best of the original trilogy. That being said, The Empire Strikes Back was dramatically better than A New Hope. It had way more going on, it obviously had shock value to it. Um, obviously it's not shocking now because if you watch it from episode one, The Phantom Menace, onwards, um, it, it, things won't be shocking because you'll know. <clears throat> so, anyway. Um, but I, I think that that's the reason why, is because The Empire Strikes Back was dramatically better. It had, it didn't have the one Death Star, and it had a super class star destroyer and it had you know it introduced Boba Fett and um it introduced Yoda to the series and um it was just so much better. It was so much better. Um <coughs> but you know anyway so and I, I, I just feel like the reason why I love Return of the Jedi most of the original trilogy is because Luke is way more grown up than he was in the first two, and he is the more of the Jedi that he's supposed to be, and all the actors and actresses. Um, were definitely in their element at that time, and um, it just had so much going on. And um, obviously, in McDormand as the Emperor, obviously, what more would you want in a movie, um, especially as the villain? And then you had the redemption story. Return of the Jedi is severely underrated, guys. Um, and I know everyone is going to complain about the whole Ewoks and the Ewok battle and all that stupid stuff that they always criticize, but whatever. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, every bit of it. Uh, yeah. The only boring parts that I kind of skip over sometimes is Tatooine, but that's in every movie. I just, something about Tatooine just is either boring to me or I just can't stay in it and I don't like it. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Um, yeah, I, I don't have anything else to say about that. I, I just, I'm not a Tatooine fan, guys, so. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, and Jabba the Hutt is, is in Return of the Jedi too, so you have Jabba the Hutt, you have Yoda, you have Palpatine, you have uh, that huge battle between father and son at the end, and you have a redemption story, and it is tragic at the same time, but it does bring things full circle, and just, 
I love it. Um, so moving on to The Force Awakens. Um, I really, really, really did absolutely, and I still absolutely love The Force Awakens. I know everyone's going to come at me because it wasn't original enough and all this other stuff, but um, I do believe that J.J. Abrams, on a cinematic level, did a brilliant job. It was, no, it was not original enough, um, but the direction of it and the characters that were introduced and um, obviously the original cast members came back and it was a really great story. Um, and, and it was a really solid movie to kick off the third trilogy, um, which is the last trilogy of the Skywalker saga. Um, and I know, I know that a few people are going to hate me about my next comment, but... <sighs> I actually really really, really did, um, I like The Last Jedi, um, I think that it was a solid story, I, what I loved about it probably most is that it was more, um, it was more bold, and a lot of people did complain about that because it was more bold, but, if we, reality is not safe, reality is bold. When you look at the most crazy stories in history, or um, when it comes to regimes or period pieces, the only ones that are going to stick out are the ones that were bold and made statements. Um, and that's what The Last Jedi did. Um, I loved everything from the showcase of Luke Skywalker's power um, to um, I don't know how to say this, but I really, 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 really my favorite character of the entire franchise is Leia. Whether you want to call her Princess Leia or General Leia, whatever you want to call her. She's Leia, and she is, like, she's not a damsel in distress. She, um, she is a fighter. She is intelligent. She is a leader. Um, she is not going to put her warriors in positions that she wouldn't do herself or that she hasn't already done herself. Um, she is strong, she is fierce, she is, um, she, she is everything that a great character is made of. <clears throat> and Carrie Fisher, it's sad that she passed away. Um, she is one of my favorite actresses. I loved her in everything that she was in. But her betrayal of Leia was so brilliant, and I really, really did love her in The Last Jedi. Like, her performance was amazing. And I'm really happy that they put Billy Lord on set to play as one of the characters. Um, I do love her as an actress, too, especially in American Horror Story. Um, the only complaint that I have... Well, one of the only complaints. Um, I don't like the fact that they're, like, I don't know, flipped on the murder switch when it comes to original characters. Um, but, and what I mean by that is, you know, 
everyone gets it. Um, but and I hope that that was not the case that they had for Leia in the final movie. Um, but anyway. What was I talking about? One of the only things that I... Um, oh, the Porgs are so cute. Uh, but I can't remember what I sang. Because I got distracted by the whole Leia thing. Um, it'll come back to me. Um... Oh my god. Okay. Well, since that's not coming back to me, um, hold on. First of all, when I saw her character, because I obviously went to theaters to watch this, I did not like Haldo. Um, I did not, and it's really sad because I love the actress, uh, especially in Jurassic Park. Uh, but then I grew to like her. Uh, but her sacrifice was so incredible, and. I'm really glad that she did what she did because it just showed how much of it showed how much of a character that she was without showing too much of her. Like it, it never has there ever been a Haldo in the Star Wars series before, but they made her boldness and her fierceness and her leadership and her sacrifice like a rich character um, and somebody that is incredible obviously um, because she sacrificed herself to save um, to save the remaining um, people in the resistance um, I'm still trying to think on what I was going to say that annoyed me about The Last Jedi, but I can't think of it right now, so I guess I'm going to just skip that part. Um, well, the annoying part is... I don't know. I don't know. I, I just feel like, so, a huge problem that I have with the fan base is that they were very judgy on the actress that played for Rose and Rose, period. First of all, I loved Rose as a character. Um, she is very, um, she, the actress had perfect um, comedic timing, um, and she was awesome. But I feel like I, I was not annoyed with her. I was annoyed with the writers that tried to force an awkward love thing between Finn and Rose, which they should just let go because no, 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 no. Um, as BFFs, yes, um, yes. The bickering and everything is absolutely hysterical, and I live for that. That is absolutely, the writers did an excellent job on that, but I don't think that they did a good job of trying to force a love thing. No, no. I don't think that there should be a love thing between Finn and Ray either. Um, no. I, I, I feel like they're more brother and sister. Um, that's the vibe that I get from 
the the actors, actor actress. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I love all the memes about the whole Poe and Finn bromance thing or whatever. I, I, like that's cute and everything, but I I think that Poe should get with Ray. I don't know. Um, but I I just don't I don't feel like any of them should be forced to love. I don't, I don't think that the writing should force them to love each other. I think that should, if anything were to happen, I think that the, the writers need to make it happen naturally, which is not what they did with Rose and Finn. Um, but um, General Hux is a complete psycho. We're just going to throw that out there, especially during his whole murder, like, not murder, but, like, during his whole psycho speech before they, in The Force Awakens, when he had the whole military thing, like, in front of him, and he was doing his psycho speech thing, and then he, uh, you know, ordered the the weapon star killer base to go off and destroy the new republic or whatever <clears throat> and first of all let's just say i didn't even like hux i didn't think that the actor was that good either when i first saw him in the force awakens until that speech then i was like that speech actually like sent chills down my spine because he, the actor was so into it and so psycho and um up until that point did not take the, the the character seriously or the actor thought that they were both terrible and that they were absolutely annoying and then that psycho speech changed everything for me on my view on all of it and um you know the actor isn't actually a great act he is a great actor um and i i found him thoroughly entertaining in um the last jedi um <clears throat> what a the fight scene with that where ray and um Yep. Where Ray and um, Kylo teamed up against um, they teamed up against um, what's his face as so guards. Um, what is his name? Oh my God! I'm being a very forgetful person tonight um and i literally just watched the movie again last night um snoke there you go i don't know how i forgot that um so <sighs> snoke's betrayal was a, a little bit of a lot of bit different than the force awakens snoke um, he is way more menacing and creepy and everything altogether in The Last Jedi. Um, he would have been a great villain, but I have a couple theories that go along with most of the fan base that I've been reading um, lately about The Last Jedi, or not The Last Jedi. Um, the Rise of Skywalker. Um, I think that that Snoke was a pawn of Palpatine's. I, in the end, Palpatine, Palpatine's master was Plagueis. If you remember the story from. Revenge of the Sith, the third one where he tells Anakin Plagueis was the first one to cheat death. He was that powerful and 
Palpatine was his apprentice, and he taught him everything he knew, and then his apprentice killed him, which was Palpatine. So everything meaning cheating death. Um, so Palpatine is so powerful. He is godlike powerful, and um, he is the first like Sith to overthrow an entire government and rule the galaxy. He is, well, he's not the first to rule the galaxy, I don't think, for a Sith, but he is the first single-handedly mastermind an entire overthrow of the entire Jedi Order and everything. Um, and he is so powerful that not, none of the Jedi knew that he was a Sith Lord until he wanted them to know, until it was too late uh, for them. So, um, yeah, for, and let's go back on the Jedi. For being Jedi, they got really cocky and arrogant and blind, um, in their final days, uh, especially. Um, I don't think that it was a great Jedi Order at all. I don't think that they were... Like, they were awesome fighters and warriors and stuff, but I think that they were, they were, I don't know how to describe it. They, they just weren't that great uh, at being people, or I don't think that's what I wanted to say. They, I don't, I don't want to compare them to the Sith either, because the Sith are evil, but... Um, the Jedi Council, the Jedi Order, were too good for their own good kind of thing. Like, they were, they were arrogant, they were cocky, and it ultimately bit them because they let their pride overshadow their sight on the bigger picture. They were, they had tunnel vision, um, and, um, sorry, my dog just made a really weird noise and he was sleeping, so I was kind of worried for a second. But anyway, um, okay, he's fine. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so, I really, really do love Ray, and I, I really do love Poe. I, I love all the characters um, that were introduced in the sequel trilogy. Oh, I know what I was going to say about what is the most annoying thing about the entire freaking sequel trilogy. <sighs> The complete underuse of C-3PO and R2-D2. There. I said it. Out of the way. That annoys me more than anything else in the sequel trilogy. Period. Um, R2-D2 literally saved everyone's life in every single one of the Star Wars movies up until the sequel trilogy. And C-3PO has always been by his side and been there since the beginning in every single movie. So that's really the only complaint that I have is that they completely underuse probably two of the most important characters of the entire franchise. Um... And they survived it all, and they saved, they saved everyone at certain times, and um, they have a bickering, bickering relationship, but they are always there for each other. Like, it's just the most annoying thing. That that is the most annoying thing for me when it comes to the sequel trilogy. Not anything that has to do with. I mean them killing off main characters and stuff is really, really annoying. Um, but 
I can handle it because they're at that age where if they were fighting and doing what they did when they were younger, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to play the whole ages card because that's silly and stupid and it's wrong. Um, so I will leave it be and I will, you know, stick to my stance on the most annoying thing is underutilizing two characters that have been so important throughout the entire series. And um, I, I do love BB-8, but I think that he should interact more with C-3PO and R2-D2 to include them both instead of creating this new droid, yes, everyone loves, and is a really cool droid and awesome and everything, but he is not R2-D2, or she is not R2-D2. Um, and I, I, I feel like I don't want them put in it so much that the writers will feel like they'll have to destroy them or kill them like they have been doing with the original people. But I do feel like they need to include them more. And I really hope that um, in this final movie that ties up 40 plus years of story and nine movies worth, I hope that they do because C-3PO and R2-D2 have been through it all and they have been two of the most, some of the most important characters of the entire story and I feel like they've been utterly and awfully neglected. Um, so that that's my that's my number one complaint about the sequel trilogy, not anything else. Um, if I had to pinpoint the main problem, the root of the problem. Um, so yeah, um, I'm very much looking forward to the rise of Skywalker. There, and I really hope that it is true that they are bringing Palpatine back because there, he is the sole purpose of everything. Um, it has been confirmed in one of the stories or whatever that he did create Anakin and Shmi's womb, so he's basically his father, but you know, obviously, he didn't sleep with. Shmi or anything, but he, you know, made her conceive Anakin um, through the Metachlorians because Palpatine is that powerful. Um, <clears throat> he is, he overthrew the government and created the Galactic Empire. He is behind everything and I feel like there is no better closure <coughs> or no better villain to end the Star Wars story than the one that started and created it all. Um, and I do feel like Darth Vader has stolen a lot of his thunder, but because Darth Vader at heart is not nowhere near the monster and evil that Palpatine is. Palpatine is the embodiment, uh, like the literal, the literal mirror of Hitler. And Hitler was such a piece of garbage. Like, there's not enough bad words to call Hitler. There, and I hope that he has the worst torture and hell than anybody else. But that's besides the point. Um, Palpatine, that, and that's not even my point that I'm trying to make, Palpatine just needs to be the final villain, like they're teasing it to be, and um, there's no better way to close out the series than having everybody come together to fight the ultimate monster the the one the most intelligent mastermind of evil and the most powerful entity of evil there's no better way to close out the biggest movie franchise one of the biggest movie fran just there's no better way 
to close out Star Wars than to make this happen. Um, that being said, I want to hear a lot of your theories and uh, um, how you think the rise of Skywalker is going to be or what you want to see. Um, and another thing I want to point out because we're discussing Star Wars tonight is I do believe that The Last Jedi will be loved and praised later on. I don't think that it is as appreciated now as it will be later on. Um, and I think that it will complement and make The Rise of Skywalker more impactful because of the events of The Last Jedi. I think that the reason why The Last Jedi has gotten a, as much criticism as it has is because it really is a bold movie. It is a bold statement. It is a bold story. Um, and it's really ruthless. It was a ruthless movie um, when it came to both sides. Um, and it's the, the story took no prisoners. And, um, like, I think that people should respect the fact that, um, they did make bold choices, and even though it was so different than the other Star Wars movies, I feel like they should still get the credit that they deserve for, um, for taking that extra step to be, to, to be its own thing, really. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I, I just feel like The Last Jedi will be more loved later on, after the Rise of Skywalker comes out when everyone gets to see every movie in a row I think that people's perspective will ultimately change about all the movies um, and I really another thing I really 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 first of all uh, the only the only Star Wars movie that um, I went in the movie theater criticizing in my head was Solo, a Star Wars story, because I literally could not picture anybody else playing as Han Solo than Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was Han Solo, um, so that's really the only, but when I watched the movie, the movie I <laughs> really did it thoroughly enjoy the movie and I think that I should get a sequel or a TV series um, to continue it out and finish it. Um, I think that that's another one that people will appreciate more down the road and the ending was really shocking um, <clears throat> with the whole big reveal and everything. Um, I, I think that the story was was great um, I think that I, should, I, if I was the director and writer, I wouldn't have done it any differently than what they did. And the guy that played, that they had playing for Han Solo, the young Han Solo, um, he did an excellent job. Um, everybody in that movie did. I think that, I think that the entire thing was fantastic. I think that the way it was shot was fantastic. Everything about it. I loved it. I don't know why... It failed at the box office. I don't know why people have criticized it the way that they have. I, I just don't get it. It's I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I loved it. I loved that him and Chewbacca didn't even like each other in the beginning, and it was hilarious to watch them bicker back and forth, and then they became close friends and everything, and, like, comrades. Um... But anyway, um, hmm. 
Oh, and it does look really beautiful in 4K too. Um, and The Last Jedi does. So, I think that I've concluded everything. I've really talked about all the Star Wars movies and everything. Um, they should have kept Digital Yoda instead of Puppet Yoda and Last Jedi. That's one other little thing that. But that's not anything that. It's a here and over there type of thing. It's. It's just a preference type kind of thing. I would have much. I, I just don't think that the, the puppet was great for its time, but. That's one, really positive great thing that the prequels did is, um, digitized Yoda, but he, was still realistic looking, and he, was able to do a lot more. Um, yeah. but, anyway, um, I think that Adam Driver is a really great actor. I think that he, like the tantrums that Kylo Ren throws and how psycho he really is, and the back and forth thing, he is a, really a complex character. Um... And Ray is too. <sighs> Ray is such a beautiful person, though. Um, literally, she tries to see the good in everybody, um, even the most damaged, like Kylo Ren. Um, hopefully, that will not be her downfall. And I would really love to see her go all the way and. I don't care if she even has to fight Palpatine herself. Um, I really am. I am all about. I am all for Rey. Love her character. Um, I, I, I love pretty much everybody. I, I really hope that they show even a little bit of more of Maz Kanata. Um, you know, I think that. I mean, I, I did love her little cameo thing in The Last Jedi, and I really hope that they bring her back because she's spunky and everything, and I really like that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so we're just waiting on The Last Jedi, and... I'm so excited. Um, there's now one other movie that I'm more excited, and I even went and watched the Avengers Endgame. That was an excellent movie. Um, Aladdin was an excellent movie. I was really looking forward to seeing the both of them, but Star Wars is... I grew up with Star Wars. <clears throat> Pretty sure every generation has grown up with Star Wars. Um, but I grew up with Star Wars. I love Star Wars. This is why Star Wars is my favorite. I think that is... Even... Not even talking about... Not even talking from a nerd's perspective or anything. Or geek, whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you really think about the depth of the story, if you really think about the mythology, if you really think about the history and the characters and the diversity and the impact and the inspiration and the tragedy of it all and the beauty of it all, Star Wars is in my opinion, the best movie franchise that has ever been made in the history of cinema. Um, it has done so much for cinema, has done so much for storytelling. Um, George Lucas, amazing. John Williams, amazing. Um, I absolutely love Carrie Fisher, and really sad that she couldn't be here to finish her story up because the Rise of Skywalker is going to be her movie, and that's really sad and depressing because she really deserved. She really deserved to to finish out Leia's story, and 
Um, I'm really excited to see what happens. I have, I think that J.J. Abrams, I think that he'll do a great job. I really do think that he will bring things full circle. Um, and I am really glad that they didn't stretch things out and wait and do this and do that. And I'm really glad that I get to, you know, be in a time and a place where we're all going to get to see the finish, the finale, the grand finale of this amazing story that has been told for the last 40 plus years and throughout the course of nine films and, and actually get to see the end result the end, the last of the Skywalker story, period, um, and that time period and what's going on and everything, and um, because it's so rich and so detailed and so incredible, I, there's, I could not possibly say all the good things that I love about Star Wars more, like, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on. This is the first hour video I've ever done before, or hour plus video, and um, we're already on an, an hour and 16 minutes, and um, I'm still talking about Star Wars. I can talk about Star Wars literally until I'm dead. Um, it's just one of those franchises that you're introduced to, and you're like, wow, that is... That is, I, I love it. I, I just love it. Um, and then to me, it's the most impactful, most inspirational, most beautiful, and tragic, and creative, and uh, the richest story I've ever seen um, being told. And it's all because everything from mythology to religion to history has all been intertwined to tell this amazing story um and it's it's so crazy it's so amazing it's so great um but anyway now i'm just rambling because i love it <laughs> anyway um yep I don't feel like I've said enough about a solo Star Wars story, but I, I did love it, so. Force Awakens was amazing. Um, I wish that The Force Awakens showed more Leia, too, but. Um, I'm glad that they didn't because they used the extra scenes to do her to edit those scenes into um, the Rise of Skywalker um, and mold it into the story and everything. So, but anyway, I really lo do love her style and her presentation, really, in The Last Jedi. Like her hairstyle and her outfit and everything and her interactions with the different characters and stuff. Um, Mark Hamill's acting was amazing. Incredible. Like that, he was shocking in The Last Jedi. Um... Yeah. So, um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you give my video a big thumbs up and comment below. Let me know what you think about um, everything, actually. Um, even if you disagree, um, it's still nice to, to, you know, not to the point of being vulgar, but it is nice to hear other people's perspective or their own view on the bigger picture um, and everything so make sure you subscribe to my channel um, because I want to do more videos like this and 
and take a minute and to really talk about uh, movies and series like this. I just wanted to do this one like this because it is the most important and the most special to me and the one that I love the most. So make sure you subscribe and I'll have more videos like this uh, on the way very soon. Um, and until next time, have a great night, guys.